All right, time for another draftphysics.com, debatephysics.com, also video presentation. So, again, subject of kinetic energy, but this time in the context of what they did to momentum to make kinetic energy viable. And what they basically are arguing is that you can have such a thing as a negative momentum or an anti-momentum, that you can move something this way and that way, and somehow the energies cancel, the momentums. Or you can crash things and somehow make the momentum disappear, as if it doesn't have to actually go somewhere. It can just cancel. So uh, this is best illustrated in <laughs> an experiment they um, perform usually with cars that have metal wheels, sometimes on air tracks, but um, usually filmed badly or from angles for which you can't really do any testing of their measurements or their calculation of velocities. Um, but you can just say, I would argue, you can argue theoretically what they're stating to be true, what physics says happens, just can't happen. It can't be true. Um, it's crazy, silly, um, nonsensical. Uh, where the hell's my pen? Oh, this one will do. Probably. Um, so, um, I have in the past um, pointed out, so they have an experiment. They Some amateurs will claim they've done this uh, with some sort of integrity, but we know they really haven't. So you can crash a, in, in a Newton's Cradle style experiment a one mass. Okay, you can swing it down and smash it into a three mass and you can actually create free momentum in the sense that you'll start with something moving a velocity and a mass that equals say 100 momentums and it will produce as an outcome 150 and their argument is is the and then you'll get 50 back so, so that's the tricky part right and <clears throat> so I've argued that I could just make a a device that instead of this being can I erase? Yeah, I can. Uh, instead of this <clears throat> being on a pendulum, well, sort of a race. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of a racing, isn't it? It's sort of a racing. Yeah, it's kind of like they're sort of experiments. Uh, so I could have uh, a trough, let's just say, that just uh, lets balls roll in. So, um, and then I could have the one mass, okay, swing in, hit the say a 5 mass or a 10 mass, doesn't really matter. Uh, their argument is, is the heavier I make it, the more momentum I'll transfer. So I start with the 100. I'll get 150 this way. This one will leave with 150. The next one falls down the trough and it hits it. This flies back with 50. So I get 50 against the next one. So it goes with 100. And you can sort of see the pattern. Um, I guess it's 75. My mistake. <laughs> you have to erase again. <sighs> oh, dangerous. All right, so it'll be 150 the first time, then seven. That's with a three mass. So if we started with a three mass, if I started with a five mass, then I could have 200 maybe. Uh, but anyway, so it's 150. The next time, 75. I get 25 back, and then we're going to do this 35 thing. And then I'll be down to 12. And so, yes, you finally run out. But all of these are in this direction. And eventually, I'll have nothing going this way. So I have zero going this way. And I'll have at least twice of what I put in. So 200, you know, 2x the kinetic energy. Well, 2x the momentum, sorry. Uh, oh, details matter. Um, the MV. Okay. So I'll double my momentum. So it's basically if I made this into a box, a little mysterious black box, that's what the black box would do. You put 100 in and you get 200 out for free. And momentum does the work. I mean, it's a real thing, momentum. You know, it's just silly to say it doesn't matter. I can double the momentum and that doesn't mean anything in physics. It definitely means something. So part of that argument, part of how they sustain that argument, is to pause. 
is to make uh, the argument that um, the more something doesn't move, okay, and the more reflection I get back, the more energy I put in. So if you're just hitting one thing into one thing and you just transfer 100%, you know, the typical Newton's cradle, when the masses are the same, that's what you'll end up doing. But as I change, make this mass heavier and heavier, I'll start getting back more and more. So the heavier I make it, the more I get back, which obviously shouldn't make much sense in the sense that the more energy I'm putting this way, so up to 200, up to twice the momentum is what I can get by their theory. But the whole idea of what a reflection represents is, in my opinion, so obvious that a reflection represents not getting the energy to go into something. So they think when you hit a brick wall that you're, you know, with 100 momentum, you put 200 into the brick wall if you get 100 back. And if you don't get the 100 back, then somehow you put less into the wall. So the, the, the less you get back, the less you put into the, the other source. So it just doesn't make any sense. And obviously there's just, they justify it by saying, well, it's only 100 because yes, you're, sacrif you're minusing 100 from the 200 and we have 100 left over going this way. But, you know, there's no logic to this idea that the, the less the, if I throw a ball at a wall, at a piece of wood, and the wood can wobble. Well, the ball won't bounce back as far because I put energy into the piece of wood. And the less the wood yields, that is, the less it obviously moves, the more I'm going to get back as a reflection, clearly indicating that if the surface doesn't accept your, the motion, if it doesn't accept the energy, the momentum, then you get it back. And that's the simple explanation <laughs> and the one coherent to... Uh, the idea of not making free momentum, which is the same thing as making, to, to anybody reasonable, I guess I would argue, they would understand that to be the same thing as making free energy. Alright, so summing up, we'll keep this video short. So Steve Mould's video basically says you can take uh, one mass, two distances, all right, and theoretically move a two mass at one distance, which means one velocity. And all I have to do is put 1.4 the velocity in here. So with 60% of the momentum, unfortunate, um, you know, 60% of the momentum, I can somehow make 100% over here. Okay, or 100 momentums. So with 60 momentums, I can make 100 momentums. And so here we have the same argument they're making that somehow you can bang a light thing into a heavy thing and make free momentum, right? So we start with 100, you get 150. And again, it's 150 going this way, 50 going back this way. Now their argument is, is this 50 going back this way, you cancel from this 50, and then you only have 100 going in this forward direction, just what you started with. But understand, if this is a pendulum, this energy is coming back, and it can do it again. <laughs> okay, and that's, you know, and you can just keep moving everything in one direction. So you can't really make this canceling argument that somehow some motion in this direction cancels some portion of the motion in the other direction, and therefore you have a net system. Because again, if I just close this and you can't see it, what the box is going to produce. And like I said, if I use a heavier mass, I can get this up to three or four times. So I could put 100 momentums in, and I could get three or 400, you know, momentums out. And everybody should agree, that can't happen. You can't do that. You can't make that box. So what they're arguing happens inside that box doesn't really happen just a story they tell uh, because what really happens is when the hundred hits the three mass this goes away with 75 <laughs> momentums and the reply is 25 and that's where your hundred is preserved so they're moving one quarter of the velocity not one half the velocity simple explanation uh, and the universe stays reasonable uh, as opposed to their unreasonable 
assertions about what the actual universe does and it's unreasonable in the sense of everybody should agree free momentum is free energy and you just can't do it because it just could be converted into perpetual motion so that's enough I think keep it short this time <laughs> yeah this time